with the blood. Okay, regarding the blood, it has several different functions. Uh, the main functions of the blood are going to be transportation, because the blood transports, for example, nutrients. It's going to be protection, because, for example, it protects us against bacteria, viruses, when we have infections. The defenses of our body are located in our blood. Regulation, for example, it helps us to regulate the temperature in our body, help us regulate the pH in our body. So if we scroll down, we can see here that the blood is made of multiple different cells. The cells in the blood are the form elements. As you can see right here, form elements. So the first type of cell that you have are the red blood cells. They are called erythrocytes, platelets, white blood cells. They are also called leukocytes. Within the white blood cells, we have granulocytes because they contain granules, and agranulocytes because they don't have granules. The granulocytes are going to be neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. The agranulocytes are going to be lymphocytes and monocytes. When we go to the doctor's office or to the hospital and they withdraw some blood, they obtain this blood and they get them in a little tube. This tube is usually placed in a little device called a centrifuge. The centrifuge is going to spin at high speeds, and then that's going to make the form elements, the cells, to go to the bottom, and the fluid in the blood to the top. We have fluid in the blood. For example, when you cut your skin, you don't see little cubes coming out of your hand. You see a fluid. So what is the name of all this fluid? It's called plasma. And as we said, what is the name of all the cells? Form elements. So then, what is the blood made of? The blood is made of plasma and form elements. What percentage? Form elements is approximately 45%, and plasma is approximately 55%. Most of the form elements, 44, 45%, is going to be red blood cells, and the rest are going to be platelets as well as white blood cells. So then, again, if I ask you in the exam, what is the blood made of? then you should answer plasma and form elements. If the question is, what percentage of blood is plasma, then the answer should be 55%. Now, let's take a look at some of the general properties of blood. There are certain values that you need to know. For example, how much blood we have. Females have 4 to 5 liters, males have 5 to 6 liters. Another important value that we have in here is the pH. The pH of the blood goes from 7.35 to 7.45, Another very important value is the hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is what gives the red blood cells the ability to transport gases, in particular oxygen. So, but how much hemoglobin females have? 12 to 16 grams per deciliter. Males have 13 to 18 grams per deciliter. Another very important value is the red blood cell count, platelet count, and white blood cell count. White blood cells, 5 to 10,000 per microliter. Platelets, 130,000 to 400,000 per microliter. In the case of the red blood cells, females are usually 4 to 5 million per microliter. Males are going to be 4 to 6 million per microliter. Pay special attention. The values that you have right here, the units, they are going to be microliters. Also, don't forget the red blood cells millions. Platelets is under 100,000. And white blood cells are only in the 10,000. Now let's talk about plasma. As we said, plasma is 55% of the blood. Main components of plasma, water and proteins. 92% of plasma is water, 7% approximately is proteins, and the rest is nutrients, hormones, gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, vitamins, etc. etc. One of the most important proteins that you're going to have in plasma, you see right here, that's why it's highlighted, it's albumin. Now we have a table where it's showing the composition of plasma. As we said, plasma is mainly water, you can see here 92%, and proteins is approximately 6 to 9%. So if you really think about it, then this is approximately 100%, just with water and proteins. However, remember you also have other components such as nutrients, glucose, lactic acid, cholesterol, etc., etc., etc. And within proteins, as you can see here, the most important one is going to be albumin because it represents 60% of the proteins that you have in your blood. Some other important concepts related to blood. One of them is blood viscosity and the other one is osmolarity. Blood viscosity got to do with the uh, uh, resistance of a fluid to flow. One condition in which the blood viscosity can be reduced is in the case of anemia, for example. 
low number of red blood cells that reduce the viscosity. A case in which you can have an increase of viscosity is when you have way too many red blood cells. This is called polycythemia. People who live in high altitudes, they have more red blood cells because there's less oxygen. So therefore you need more red blood cells to capture the low amount of oxygen. This is going to produce obviously an increase in viscosity. Therefore your heart will work more. Another very important concept regarding the blood is osmolarity. In other words, the amount of dissolved particles that cannot pass through the blood vessel wall. So osmolarity is very important because if the osmolarity is higher inside the blood vessel, then the fluid will tend to go inside the blood vessel, therefore increasing the pressure. And if the pressure increases, obviously the person is going to start having high blood pressure. One very important component in your blood that produces this type of osmolarity inside your blood vessel is protein. Where is the blood produced? The blood is produced in the bone marrow by a process called hemopoiesis. And other organs such as the spleen and the liver may start producing red blood cells in very extreme circumstances, like for example, when the person has cancer. But in normal circumstances, the bone marrow, especially in the long bones, are gonna be the ones that are gonna be responsible for hemopoiesis which means the production of red blood cells. So then the blood is produced in your bone marrow. White blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. For how long the red blood cell is going to live? It's going to live for 120 days. After 120 days, this red blood cell is going to die. Now, what makes your bone marrow produce red blood cells? The kidney, it's a special organ that is going to produce a substance called erythropoietin. When the levels of red blood cells drop, the kidney releases erythropoietin. The erythropoietin travels through the blood, obviously, and reaches the bone, and the bone, as a consequence of that, is going to produce red blood cells.